How's it going? Today we're talking about a species that as a fisherman in the sea you would have come across this at some point. Um, if not caught it, you would definitely have used it as bait. We're talking about the mackerel. Now specifically the chub mackerel, but everyone's got their own different names for it. Slimy mackerel, they've got sugar mackerel, they've got horse mackerel. It's, the mackerel is the same thing. You don't, sugar mackerel isn't a separate species, horse mackerel is not a separate species. Problem with common names, everything gets mixed up. Just the sizing definitely important. Anyway, my rant for the day. The mackerel, Scomba japonicus. Now, Scomba is a scientific name, a Greek name, and japonicus comes from where it was first described, as the first description of the species comes from Japan. So, japonicus. Your mackerel itself, the record for them uh, actually sits in Mexico. That was a fish of uh, about 50 centimeters and it was actually 5 kgs in weight so that's scrap that mackerel get to about 5 kgs they the max size they get to is about 50 centimeters although we often get them a hell of a lot smaller than that the IGFA record for them is 2.17 kgs and that was caught in Mexico many moons ago now mackerel have got as a species themselves, they're quite torpedo shaped. Generally a bluey green on the top and quite a whitey silver sort of stomach. Um, very large eye for their size. Their mouths are very big as well for the size of the fish. They got little finlets uh, right on the back of the tail, the, right before the tail, that peduncle sort of area. Tail is a very lunate, uh, more of a scissor type tail actually than lunate. You can push them together. But yeah, that's the mackerel color itself is that greeny top section with the black line sort of squiggles on them. It's a very, very distinct color. You'll see it in a whole lot of lures. Every company has, has replicated it. Your mackerel feeding method, they like to feed on plankton and smaller sort of items in that sort of epipelagic zone, so the top, top section of the water. For that, the gill rakers, so the little spikes that they got in the gills are quite enlarged, and that actually supports the gill filaments themselves keeps them out, it almost makes a bit of a net that sits in their throat. So they can swim with their mouths open like that. And any food that's going in is going to get caught in the gills and they can obviously close and then filter, filter, move that down into their throat, into their stomach. So that's how they feed on all those, the little bits floating around. They actually filter it with their, their gills and with those gill rakers holding the gills open. Now, in terms of behavior and things like that, they school together, so mostly by size. So if you catch mackerel that size, generally the entire school is going to be about that size. But you do get some bigger, uh, bigger fish in between them. Now, movement-wise, they move south during the winter. So that's when you'll get more catches down Port Edward, things like that, bigger, bigger shoals. And then in summer, they move up into the north, and that's generally when our mackerel supplies run out. So. Stockpile, it's a really important thing this time of year. We're now just getting to the beginning of summer. You really need to get your mackerel set up for, for winter. Make sure it's packed properly, well insulated, packed in a cooler box inside your freezer. Just in case the power goes out or the missus or maid puts the uh, freezer off, you don't have a lawsuit or a divorce on your hands like many have had. So, they're spawning in KZN in that December through December back to July. So July through to December if you're going to be right about and that's sort of the peak periods of when you're going to get them in their most abundance because that's when they're spawning and they're going to be off KZN. Mackerel makes a lovely bait. They are nice and oily, slimy, high in omega-3, very good to eat. Um, the smoked ma peppered mackerel is one of the nicest things you're ever going to eat. Your, yeah, as I said, the flesh goes soft though if you don't treat it properly. So if you are going to eat them, get them into an ice slurry as quick as possible. Um, the guys recommend breaking the necks as well. So it's an option, but you're into an ice bath nice and quickly, keeps the meat nice and firm. Um, for catching them, your normal Yuzuri type sabiki type rigs are going to be your, your key to catching them because it's a whole lot of hooks on one line. Remember you're limited to 10 hooks. As far as I remember, it's 10 hooks per, per rod. So you've got guys putting 24 hooks on, it's not actually legal. And then, yeah, adding little bits of bait onto that is a very good method of, of, of getting them to bite when they're not wanting to. And also, if you want to get them into the area you're feeding, the little trick, use a chum bag. It's a little orange, uh, the bag get the oranges in. Fill that full of your old bits of bait and things like that. Put that out next to your boat just to let it sort of wash around and get all that chum working into the water. And then just two little silver hooks. And you don't even need to add anything on them. You'll catch mackerel by the, by the dozen. So yeah.
Mackerel, very important bait fish, very important food fish other parts of the world, but it can be here, yeah, something to look at. And yeah, a species that we wouldn't have or wouldn't be able to fish without. Cheers guys.